The Victoria we meet this series is um, a month on from where we've left her at the end of series one, and she has been in what we call confinement. Effectively, she can't do anything for herself. I may have had a baby, but I'm quite capable of walking down the stairs. And arrives back to work feeling very threatened. I should like the boxes to be sent to me so I can, I can master the detail. Yeah, of course. So long as you do not think you will wear yourself out. Life is moving on without her and, and Albert has come in and taken her place, which as you can imagine, creates fireworks. Thank you, gentlemen. I see no reason to trouble the Queen with this. I think Leopold does think it's a man's world and I think he has huge respect for her. But then there comes a point where his attitude is, it's now your job to produce. And I don't need to tell you how important that is. No, Uncle. You don't. The overriding quality in Victoria's life was her love for her husband. So she had to steer a course between what Albert wanted to do, he wished to establish himself, not just as a sidekick, but as somebody who could contribute. It's the annual dinner of the Statistical Society, of which you know I am a patron. I have agreed to give a speech. Albert's incredibly ambitious, has a great vision for the country, is a workaholic, and Victoria resents any attempt to take away any of her power. Is this wise? It's incredibly complex and dynamic. All I can think about Albert is the one man I thought I could trust. My husband has deceived me. For a man that, that has a restless quality and a fervent mind, to not be able to exercise that must bring an, an immense frustration. And when you get the opportunity to relinquish those shackles, and suddenly you have a freedom of decision-making, of trusting your own instincts. For a man of his innate nature, I think would be not only freeing, but potentially addictive. Retreating from Kabul? Well, why didn't you tell me? I think Peel realised that Victoria was so much more than her stature and her age. I do have some interest in these matters, Sir Robert. I'm a soldier's daughter. She was just so capable, a woman, and she really wanted to learn. And, and particularly when Albert came on the scene, I think Peel thought that the country was in good hands. Peel was a firm believer in the power of the monarchy. The monarch was the one stable force. And when you think how long Victoria's reign was, he was right. I am a queen. And to be a queen, I must rule. Victoria was in no way a chaste monarch like her predecessor, Queen Elizabeth. She didn't try to make herself necessarily into a man. Instead, you have a woman who is incredibly in love, but also who is very aware of this immense responsibility she has to rule. She, perhaps we might say, was the first monarch to really reconcile womanhood within a masculine power structure. What does the Archbishop know about the pain and peril of childbirth? It's a really interesting question with Victoria. Did she have this fire in her and patience because she was born that way, that stubborn nature? Albert, I don't want you to go to dinner. Or is it because actually she was in a world where she was four foot 11 and a woman and had to kind of fight her way through to be heard and taken seriously? I think potentially it's probably a mixture of both. And what am I then? An ignoramus who has to have things summarized by her husband. If you have people around you with a certain preconception because you're short or because you're a woman, it's quite an interesting story if it explains why she is the way she is. I am sure that you and Albert will give your country many princes and princesses. <laughs> Actually, Uncle Leopold, what my country needs right now is a queen. Not a broodmare. Mm.